So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Chloe now. So Chloe, do you want to start telling us about your story? How did you become a welder? What took you from being a hairdresser to being a welder? Okay, so my name's Chloe, I'm a welder, and I did go to college when I left school to be a hairdresser. It wasn't like something I was really interested in, it was mainly because some of my friends were doing it, and it was just a quite easy choice to make to carry on in that kind of friend group, etc. I didn't really enjoy it that much, but I finished the course and then I went on to do health and social care. Um, I was a carer for two years. I really enjoyed it and I learned a lot, loads of life skills in that. Um, but things happen in life that will put you at a crossroads and you've got to make a choice. And you have to make a good choice. And I decided to go um, back to college and learn a trade, but I didn't choose to do well. So I applied for a warehouse role and then I was only supposed to be there for two weeks. But there, I heard there were shorter welders. <clears throat> so that was my opportunity to ask to let me have a go. I was quite good. So they said they were going to put me on an apprenticeship. Um, and it's the best, best choice I've ever made, really. I moved jobs halfway through. So now I currently work at Alpha Manufacturing in Hickson. I finished my apprenticeship there. Um, I won STEM Apprentice of the Year 2019 as well. I thought it was a joke, honestly, because I never win anything. I was quite naughty at school um, so when I went back to my old school Cheadle High it's called Cheadle Academy now uh, they were very shocked because I was the only person from a year group to go back and do like so yeah brilliant and so if you could speak to your younger self now um, what would you what would you say to her if you were sort of looking back and going looking at the journey that you've been on what words of advice would you give her in school now honestly just to start a lot sooner use your own kind of decisions and your own thoughts a lot of people around you will give you their advice like your friends or your family what they think you should do and they know you better than anyone so in hindsight it's probably you know a good educated answer for you but you're going to that job every day you're the one who's going to be learning whatever it is you go to college for so you need to enjoy it otherwise you won't try you probably won't get good marks and you'll feel that it was a waste of time but just push yourself and do something that you're proud of brilliant and do you think would you say you need to be a creative person to be in engineering um, I would say that, that helps a lot, being able to look at something and picture it like in pieces or as a finished product and things like that. I did get three GCSEs at school and one of them was art and that was the best one. I got a B. Um, so I know that I'm quite creative and I didn't even know what welding was before I walked in that factory. And it's quite it's just educating people what's out there. You wouldn't know unless you've got in to do it like work experience, get some good work experience in. Um, but yeah it's just it's ridiculous the things that you can make like all the ideas that I've got now and what I can do what I could make I know I'm in a trade for life so it's it is I recommend it to anybody brilliant brilliant don't forget if you've got questions you want to ask Chloe we've got the chat feed at the side you can send that question straight to me and I will make sure that we get your questions to Chloe over the course of the next 25 minutes or so that we've got together today. Um, Chloe, what do you think's been the best thing that you've been able to do since becoming a welder? Have you had any problems that people have presented you with to solve? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say I've had like problems to solve. Um, if I've been given a job and I've got an idea of how it'll work better. I'll obviously say that, but with certain things, you've got job specifications and you've got procedures to follow. So whatever you think might work, won't work. So it is about communicating your ideas across and there's nothing wrong with having an idea about something. The worst you're gonna get told is no, and you could try somewhere else, but whatever it is, there's always a solution to it. Whatever problem there is, we'll always find a solution. Brilliant. So do you want to do some, uh, do you want to show us some welding live now? Um, or do you want Yes, to it'll be a little bit loud. Um, I've just got to walk through the factory. So 
my jury is, and I'll show you some Meg Weldon. Brilliant. That is fantastic. And while Chloe is on her way around to show us this, which I am really excited about, honestly, I've been uh, beside myself here in the office that I get to see this welding and, and talk to you while it's happening. We are very, very excited to see this. Um, I'll show you yeah. around a little bit. Brilliant. Fantastic. It's looking very, uh, I very tidy. I won't be able tidy. to see you, but I'll explain some things as I'm walking through. Go on. But this bit is the TIG area, so we do all high grade stainless steel in there. You might be able to see Sean doing a bit of work when I go past. There he is. Excellent. Oh, that's brilliant. That's amazing. But yeah, it's such a busy environment. We've got lots going on. We've got so many machines. We've got a little robot that's not going at the moment. Else I would show you that. Lots of stuff going on. Fantastic. Oh, wow. That looks incredible. And this is the welding area down there. You see all the screens. Brilliant. Uh, there's Phil. Right, I'm going to do some welding for you. Wow. So I'll set you up on the table. You'll be able to watch. Perfect. And we've got some questions already lining up. My screen is filling up. So make sure if you've got a question yeah, you want to ask Chloe, awesome. get that in the chat now. And um, once we've done the welding, we'll start going through some of these questions. I'll get all my stuff on now. Funky hat. Oh, wow. That hat is incredible. That is quite an outfit. I am. I am quite jealous of that. That looks incredible. Honestly, that looks amazing. Okay. So I've just got some plates and some tube here. I'm going well down there, so you can see. We get some of the guns up with. It's that challenge of standing up a phone and making sure we can still see what's out there. <laughs> Don't worry about it at all. Oh, here we go. That is perfect. Right, if you can all see, if my phone doesn't fall, hopefully. Wow. Oh, that, wow, that is incredible. This is honestly, this is absolutely amazing. There we go. Brilliant. That is amazing. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is absolutely and that's big welding. Brilliant. That is fantastic. Right, I'm going to walk back over. I'm going to keep my stuff on and I'll be able to hear you in about two minutes. Perfect. And don't forget, everyone. I have now got uh, six questions, seven questions lining up in the chat feed. If you've got questions you want to ask Chloe, make sure that you get that into the chat now. So you're round instead of looking at me. Yeah, this is our robot here. It's not going at the moment, but that's really interesting. Got some of the guys working. Jenny. <laughs> She's our design engineer. Lots of the shader. Sean. Okay, nearly there. It's a big place, big place. Lots to do, and this is the thing, there's lots to offer within manufacturing. There's loads of jobs you can go down with engineering, and people don't understand this until you're in there working. So like I say, getting your work experience, that'll really help you.
There we go. Okay. Fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Chloe. That was absolutely amazing. And I have got... It was only a quick five minutes, but it gives you a bit of an insight. Like, it's, I love it, I do. You're left alone. You can do your work. You're really proud of doing a job start to finish. And just have some confidence within yourself to go and do something different than everybody else. Because in five years' time, you'll probably find yourself doing that anyway. So... Brilliant. Well, while you were doing that, I have got questions galore popping up in the feed okay. to me. So we're going to start trying to go through some of these. Um, so we'll start with the first question that came in, and that is, when did you become a welder? How old were you? I was 21 when I started an apprenticeship. I was the oldest person in that room. Brilliant. And um, the next question that's come in from St. John's Church of England from Danny, he's asked, um, is it challenging being a welder? It is, but I think no matter what job you do, it can challenge it. it depends what you want from it. Like if you want to progress and educate yourself and keep learning, you are going to be challenged because no one knows everything straight away. I come into this with no background, so I had to do extra lessons to prove I had like the mentality to get through the course. I did it because this, I've got a lot of motivation within me to kind of prove that I am supposed to be here. So I don't want no different treatment because I'm a girl. I don't want none of that. I can probably lift more than some of the men. So I like to show through my work, I can do it, I can be here. So anybody else can. Brilliant. And the next question, um, do you weld a range of things or is it the same things you're doing on a regular basis? We do a lot of different stuff ranging from, at the moment we're doing lots of hand sanitizers, obviously for the Rona going round. Um, but like I usually do uh, cabinets and doors, so they're for the Swedish army. So we do do some like interesting things. Uh, like I said about Ashida, they're um, a food processing company so that's like all high grade stainless steel stuff uh, we've got loads of different contracts as well for all different companies ranging from certain vans to brackets and heavy duty things I can't really say much obviously but yeah we do a lot of in-house stuff and then we've got contracts from different places okay and the next question I think this one's quite clear but is the job dangerous it can be. You're playing with fire, aren't you? So um, that can uh, happen a few times. You can burn yourself. Um, may, the main of it is just being careless. If, if you, you know, aren't aware of your surroundings and what you're actually doing, then you're going to get hurt. So be aware of where you are and what you're doing. And there's, like I say, it's the most best, it is the best job I've ever had. It's the most fun I have at work. Um, yeah, I, I do. I really love it. So, Well, I think that answers Natalie's question, which was next. Do you like your job? I love it. Yes. It, it ranges all the time, like I say. So you've got MIG welding, TIG welding, stick welding. There's loads of different processes for it. I mainly do MIG when I'm at work and I do some TIGging as well. Um, I, I wish I could have showed you a bit of that, but I've showed you MIG now. Maybe next time. Okay. Um, and so the next question that's come in is what made you want to become an engineer in the first place? What made you want to get into welding? I didn't know anybody who kind of did anything like this. I didn't know another girl who was a welder. Um, and like I say, it was just it was just chance that I ended up in that factory on a cover for someone's holiday. I had a job at Rolls Royce for going after. So, and that would have been more money than, than the apprenticeship I was on. But I thought I'm going to learn this trade. I don't know any other girl doing it. Why isn't there any other girls doing it? So I don't want to be like the only person going down this road, which is why I'm really vocal on my social media. And I've trained about six girls now who have come in, whether they're apprentices or they're on work experience. And they're so good. Like, honestly, you, you pick it up so quick. And I think we need more girls in this industry. So come on. Brilliant. 
And is there anything particular that you're working on right now that you are able to tell us about? Anything special or a bit different? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. So when I first started, I wanted my own Chloe shed to do my own little bits of welding, make my own, you know, anything that I can think of. And I've got it. It's not a shed, it's a container. And um, I, I've got all my power in there now. I'm just waiting for some machines to come down. Since I started welding, I had a lot of um, kind of attention off big companies. And without saying too much, I'm not going to tell you who or where, but I am a sponsored welder. And within this container will be my machines um, and a few other electricals that I'll need. But that's my most proudest thing. And them. <laughs> that is my logo. And that'll be my brand. Um, I could, honestly, if I can have a logo, if I can have a container, any of you can. Like I said, I was not very good at school. I was going to swear then, but I didn't. <laughs> um, I was not very good at school and I was in detention more than anything. Um, so if, if I can literally do this and kind of change who I used to be, I was that mouthy, naughty, annoying pupil. That was me. And I'm probably still a bit annoying now, but I really love what I do and I'm really proud of where I've got. And if I can do it, anyone can. Brilliant. And the questions are absolutely flowing now. Um, so next question that's come in is, how many people do you work with? Um, I'd say there's about 15 welders, and about 400 men in the factory. So <laughs> there is a lot. But we have got some girls, like you saw Gemma. She's our design engineer. Big up, Jemmy. Yeah. And Ben wants to ask, does the robot weld as well? That one is the true Bend robot. We do have a robot welder, yes. Um, that one is preset for, like, big chassis and heavy, heavy welding. Okay. We covered the next one. So we somebody's asked again how old you were when you started, which we said you were 21. Um, somebody wants to know what age do you need to be to become a welder? And are there any, any skills and qualifications that you need? I didn't have any. I didn't have any that was other than me English, actually. And you wonder, why do you need English or ICT to do it? I'm not even sure now, but you do. So if you can do it when you're at school, you'll save a lot of time. Like I say, I was 21. I didn't get one of my Englishes and I didn't get ICT at school. So I had to do that do it now and you'll save so much time honestly like, don't even care like do your homework <laughs> literally do your homework because you'll be doing it when you're 20 when you realize what you want to do in life brilliant and uh, here's the important question they want to know as well what what does the pay start at the pay for an apprentice yeah <sighs> okay so it's obviously government you know and it it's pretty shocking you know I'm not gonna lie it's an apprentice wage it should there's no difference in an 18 year old a 16 year old or a 50 year old you're doing the same job so I completely can say like put your head down do some work if your companies are all different so different companies will pay you different wages um, the company I work for pays an apprentice very well um, but obviously I know that there's others out there that don't, and I don't see the point. You're both doing the same job, no matter how old you are. So you should get paid the same. Brilliant. Um, and what's the hardest job you've had to weld? I'd say like uh, the different positions that you have to get in, because you can't just weld something flat sometimes, like it'll come and it's massive. So you've got to get on the floor or you've got, you know, reach over or just so it's all about body control i put a video on my instagram um about that saying see i, I refuse to do a weld in like more than i have to so i will do like body control to do it like how i like it so it's just learning just practice okay and um we've cut you've already told us about um the women and some of the women that you work with and the the people the women females you brought in with your training um, but there's been quite a few questions about whether you work with other women and whether there are lots of girls doing your job. Um, but then this is an interesting one that's come through. Were you scared when you first started welding? I was really scared. Um, I was nervous more than anything. 
But again, it was stupid thoughts that I shouldn't care about. Oh, what will this person think? Or I wonder if I get judged or I wonder if anyone says anything nasty. Okay. Really don't care about that. You could work in a chip shop and get it. Do you know what I mean? Like you could go anywhere. There's people and people have opinions and they're going to tell you sometimes. And why does it matter? It only matters what you think. So I was pretty scared starting anywhere you go. Even when I started this job, even though I'd done welding for a bit, I was still scared. But why? You've got no reason to be scared at all. If you can't do it, try and you will. Yeah. Brilliant. And um, one pupil wants to know, what was the metal called that you were just welding then? That was mild steel. Brilliant. And did school help you become a welder? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but is that because if you were sort of looking back now, do you think you were, uh, if you'd applied yourself differently, you might have been able to get there a bit faster? Yes. I do think it's all about the way you are. You as a person, if anybody can see that you're trying and you really want to do something good, they will help you. If you've got a bad attitude, you don't turn up half the time and you, you know, you're mouthy, people aren't going to want to help you. Why would they put their time in on somebody? You can't even just give them basic respect. Brilliant. And somebody's asking the competition, you were telling us about Apprentice of the Year. What was, what was that and how did you get involved in that? I didn't, I was at home, I remember it like yesterday because nothing good, nothing good used to happen to me, rather should I say. Um, yeah, I just had this letter and it said, congratulations, you've, you've won STEM Apprentice of the Year. And I was like, is this a joke? Like, I didn't believe it really, but yeah, got an award for it. It's on my mantelpiece still at home now. I'm well proud of it. Um, yeah, I was, I was shocked to even be nominated, Never mind win, so. Brilliant. And um, somebody said, if you weren't a welder, what do you think you would like to be if you weren't a welder now? It would be something like, I don't know why, it, I wanted to say dangerous, but not dangerous, like exciting. Like, I don't know, um, like a, um, armed response police. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, just something exciting, always on the move, like, yeah, or a race car driver or something, just something exciting, I don't know. Brilliant. Um, so did, uh, the, the next question that we're working through now, so did anyone else in your family weld before you? No. Okay, and if you make anything, like you were just showing us your cards and the bits that you're setting up, if you make anything for yourself, do you get to keep it for free? Yes. <clears throat> I make it from scrap though, and I always ask before, Brilliant. And what is the, the robot welder's name? And does he does he have a nickname around? Mm, uh, I'm going to let you decide that. Whoever answers what his name is, that's what I shall call it from now on. Oh. So whoever puts the first answer in, that's what it's going to be called. Brilliant. So and can the robot talk? Yeah, I talk to it. Fantastic. So uh, we are we are nearly working our way through. We're running short of time now, though, as well. So I'll try and get through as many of these as I can. Um, but do other people think that you're good at what you do? <laughs> um, I don't know. I well, think I'm good at something if I can look at it. And I think it's good. Like when I started welding, if, if my bosses had come around and they had a look at something and they said it was good, I'd be like, I'd be really chuffed. But now I've, I've done it four years. It's not, none of my stuff comes back. It's, it's not falling apart. So I think it's good. And were you, uh, were you underestimated? Do you think, did anyone think that you couldn't do the job when you started? Yeah. Even picking stuff up, it'd be like, don't pick that up. I'll get somebody to do it. And as soon as he walked off, I'd pick it up and just prove that I can do it. Um, I think it is literally, it's a gender thing. Like, girls are just as strong as boys. But we've got Bob the Robot has come through as the suggested name for, for the robot. So I think, are we taking that on? Is he going to become Bob? Bob, that's it now. Bob the Robot welder. Brilliant. How many years have you been welding for now? Well, I'm 26 now, so I've been welding. So I was 21 when I started, but I think I was almost 22 um, because I'd started in 2017, October. 
So it's around nearly five, Brilliant. four five. Brilliant. And um, is there a lot of other things that you think you could do with the knowledge that you've now gained as a welder? Yes, like talking to younger females about what they could do and the roles that they could go down. I think it's, like I say, I, I'm, I've only been recognised because it's not very common that girls do it, but I don't want to be like the only one. I want more girls to come into it because I know that I can do it. You can do it too. And I know how much I enjoy it. And I think a lot of girls do stuff just to kind of fit in or, oh, I must do this because this is how people perceive me. And even lads, like doing stuff for other people. Don't. <laughs> do it for yourself. So I think we've got, we've got final four questions now that I'm going to go through. Um, and then we will let you carry on because you have been incredibly generous with your time today and it's been fantastic. You're very welcome. I've really enjoyed myself. It hasn't been scary because I can't even see anybody looking at me. <laughs> so I don't know who's watching. Brilliant. Well, so these are the, these are the last four questions. I've sort of just put them in a slightly different order than they came in. Um, but have you ever injured yourself while you've been welding? When I'm welding? Yeah. Have you injured yourself? Yes. What, what Lots happened? of times. Did you anything that you can tell us about? Well, it's just again, like I said earlier, about being careless. Things happen. Things can slip. You know, we're people. We're not robots. Um, yeah, things can go wrong. But like, just stupid things I've done. Like I'm holding something, hitting it with an hammer, and I'll miss and hit my finger. Like. And you'd think you'd do that once, and I don't. I do it like five times before I learn. So it is it is silly things like that. And obviously sparks can burn you, but you've got your fire retardant overalls on. So it takes a lot to get through them, but it does happen, obviously. So Brilliant. And have your parents supported you as you've been through this journey? Yeah, they're both dead proud of me. Um, my dad used to work at JCB, so he's got some kind of like engineering background um but my mum hasn't so they were both kind of a bit wary of it uh, me being in my own head all day might be a problem but it hasn't been because I got loads of time to think about my next project what I want to do next what I want make I made a pumpkin the other day out of horseshoes and I'll put that on my Instagram when I have put some little fancy bits on it brilliant that's that sounds Quite exciting and appropriate as well with a month to Halloween too. That's what I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm ahead of the game. Awesome. So last two questions then. The, the first one, what's your favourite thing about being a welder? That when I'm working, I'm just like any other guy. You don't know I'm a girl. You don't know nothing until I lift my mask up. Even my voice, you'd still think I was a guy. So it's... It's just literally, you, you are doing your job. That's what it is. You're not a girl, you're not a boy, <clears throat> you're not 26 and you're not 15. You're doing your job and that's it. Brilliant. And then the final one, um, if you could give one piece of advice to someone who else who wants to be a welder, what advice would that be? It would be to speak to other welders, get all your information, really research it look into it find out what type of welding you want to do obviously if you're doing an apprenticeship you've got to do all the units but just research it look into it and see what you want to do write some goals down and like I say speak to other welders and see what they what they say and there's a great community on Instagram any welders on Instagram they're so kind and they'll always give you some advice so I really really beg that brilliant well, that is absolutely fantastic, Chloe. Thank you so much for your time today. And thank you, everybody who has joined us for this interview as well. I'm going to end the interview now. This will be uploaded onto our YouTube page for you to watch again. Um, we've had some amazing questions and we hope that you'll come and join us again next week when we've got Vincent, the brain engineer. But Chloe, thank you. You have been incredible today. Um, I'm so Thank you so people. much for having me and I'm really impressed with those questions. Keep them coming for the next engineers coming on and get all your information and decide what road you want to go down. Brilliant. 
Don't forget, teachers, you can find all of our resources at www.leadersaward.com. And um, if you need any more inspiration, join us the same time next week where we'll be chatting with Vincent, the brain engineer. But for now, from myself here at our Burnley office and from Chloe, the welder, thank you so much for joining us and we'll speak to you all soon. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.